get ready to turn heads and shake up the battlefield. The beauty of Dungeons & Dragons lies in its immense diversity and customization. With countless race and subclass combinations to choose from, finding the perfect match for your playstyle is like unlocking a unique piece of a vast, intricate puzzle. But if you're looking to not just participate, but dominate the game, then these five incredible race and subclass combinations are worth your attention. They each offer a potent blend of abilities, traits, and skills, delivering an edge that will leave opponents in awe and allies in admiration. Strap in, adventurers, as we delve into these exceptional matchups that can transform you into a legend of the realm. Number 1 Mountain Dwarf and Abjuration Wizard As a Mountain Dwarf Abjuration Wizard, you're a magically charged powerhouse, blending the might of a warrior with the intellect of a wizard. The attributes you gain from your Mountain Dwarf heritage aren't merely combat-ready gear and poison resistance, they transform you into a formidable player in any arena. Being a wizard who can comfortably wear medium armor is a seriously cool and rare perk. It gives you sturdy protection when the heat of the battle turns up, meshing well with your magical defenses. You're also no stranger to dwarven weapons like the Hand Axe, Light Hammer, Battle Axe, and War Hammer. So, you're not just a spell slinger when the time calls for it, you can plunge into the fray, using your traditional dwarven weapons with expert ease. You've also got an ace up your sleeve with your Mountain Dwarf Night Vision. Known as Dark Vision, this feature enables you to see perfectly in the dark up to 60 feet. It's a handy trait that your kin have developed from generations of underground living and it grants you a significant advantage when dealing with low light conditions or exploring shadowy caves. You're also gifted with Dwarven Resilience, an impressive trait that makes you more resistant to poison than the average adventurer. Whether it's a venomous creature's bite or a dagger coated with poison, you can weather it more effectively. Yet, your Mountain Dwarf Abjuration Wizard's real strength isn't just your physical abilities, it's your mastery over magic that truly sets you apart. Specializing in Abjuration Magic, you're the go-to individual for warding off negative energies, blocking invasive magical surveillance, or shutting down unwanted interdimensional portals. Your Arcane War, the core of your defensive magic, is a magical shield that protects you, soaking up damage that would otherwise injure you. The ward's resilience is influenced by your proficiency in wizardry and intellectual prowess, with hit points equivalent to twice your wizard level plus your intelligence modifier. This ward acts as your frontline defense, absorbing any damage you would otherwise incur. However, if the assault is so strong that it depletes the ward's hit points to zero, you bear the brunt of any residual damage. Even when emptied of hit points, the ward's enchantment lingers. Each time you cast an abjuration spell of first level or higher while the ward is inactive, it regains vitality, restoring hit points equal to twice the level of the spell cast. It's important to note that you can only manifest this ward once, and cannot recreate it until a long rest is undertaken. But, the magic doesn't stop there. As you level up, you unlock even more potent abilities. Starting at 6th level, your projected ward lets you protect others with your arcane ward. When a creature within 30 feet of you gets hurt, you can use your reaction to have your arcane ward absorb that damage. If the damage busts the ward, any leftover damage goes to the creature you were protecting. By 10th level, your improved abjuration lets you add your proficiency bonus to ability checks made as part of casting abjuration spells like Counterspell and Dispel Magic, making these spells even more potent. Finally, at 14th level, your spell resistance gives you an edge against magic. You'll have advantage on saving throws against spells, and resistance against the damage of spells, making you a bulwark against magical threats. Of course, let's not forget, you're a wizard. So, your intelligence is vital. With a little help from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, you can channel your ability score increase into boosting your intelligence rather than strength, pushing the boundaries of your magical power and knowledge. So, as a Mountain Dwarf Abjuration Wizard, you're the one standing firm when things get dicey, using a blend of physical resilience, sharp wits, and protective magic to safeguard your allies and fend off your foes. You are laughing at another wizard who does not have armor or has to spend a spell slot for mage armor. While they are holding a staff or a dagger, you are welding a mighty warhammer. Number 2, Kalashtar in Path of the Totem Barbarian. If you're aiming to create a character that stands strong in the face of adversity, the mix of Kalashtar and Path of the Totem Barbarian is a dynamite choice that's sure to electrify your dungeons and dragons experience. In the Kalashtar, we find a being of extraordinary mental prowess. 
Their minds are as resilient as a fortress, forged in the fires of psionic power. The Kalashtar trait dual mind gives you a significant edge with a hip advantage on all wisdom saving throws. No tricks or manipulations can easily cloud your judgment, you're just too sharp for that. And it's not just about mental agility here, there's also a robust mental shield in place. The Kalashtar trait mental discipline provides you with resistance to psychic damage like a mental suit of armor against any psionic assault. And let's not forget about the mind link ability. You can form telepathic connections with others, sharing thoughts directly, no need for words. This can be a brilliant asset when quiet and calculated strategies are required. Finally, since the Kalashtar does not dream, they are immune to all sleep and dream effects and spells. Now, to make this combo even more slick, we're going to tweak the rules a bit. Using the rule from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, we can change the Kalashtar's ability score increases to strength and constitution. This amps up your physical power, making you not just mentally tough, but also a physical powerhouse. Then, we move on to the path of the Totem Barbarian. The main totem we're going to focus on is the Bear Totem. The Bear Totem is what makes this combination shine. The warrior that doesn't just endure, but thrives in the heat of battle. When your rage takes over, you transform into an absolute tank on the battlefield. And here's where the magic happens. The Bear Totem Spirit grants you resistance to all damage, except Psychic. But remember, as a Kalashtar, you're already covered against Psychic damage. So, in effect, when you're in Rage Mode, you're resistant to all forms of damage. You're the true definition of a force to be reckoned with. The Path of the Totem Warrior isn't just about picking up a big axe and hitting things, although that's pretty fun too. It's about embracing the primal spirits of nature to become a beast on the battlefield. First, you become a Spirit Seeker. This gives you a unique connection with the animal world, allowing you to cast spells like Beast Sense and speak with animals, but as rituals. That's right, you can chat with critters and see through their eyes. It's a wild twist that opens up a whole new level of interaction in your adventures. Next up, you choose your totem spirit, which is basically your spirit animal guide. This choice gives you various supercharged features when you're raging. For instance, if you choose the bear, which fits perfectly with our Kalashtar combo, you resist all damage except psychic while raging. That's a massive boost, making you the ultimate tank on the battlefield. As you continue on this path, you'll gain the aspect of the beast at the 6th level. This gives you another magical boon based on your totem animal. If you stick with the bear, your carrying capacity is doubled, and you have advantage on strength checks to break or lift things. You won't just be a warrior, but a bear strong champion. By the time you hit 10th level, you'll become a spirit walker. This means you can cast commune with nature but as a ritual. In doing so, a spiritual version of your totem animal appears to guide you. This ability takes your bond with nature to another level, making you a true sentinel of the wild. Finally, at 14th level, you reach Totemic Attunement. This is another bonus based on your totem animal that further enhances your raging abilities. If you've stuck with the bear, any hostile creature within 5 feet of you has a disadvantage on attack rolls against targets other than you. In essence, you protect your allies just by being in the fight. All in all, this mix of Kalashtar and Path of the Totem Barbarian creates an epic character that's equal parts cerebral and primal. You are tough and you can resist and handle any damage thrown your way. It's the ultimate choice for those ready to conquer any challenge that the DM throws their way. So, are you ready to channel your inner beast and take your DnB experience to soaring new heights? Let the games begin! Number 3 Dragonborn and Draconic Bloodline Imagine this, you're playing DnD, and you've got a character that's not just connected to dragons but is practically Draconic royalty. This, my friends, is what you get with the Dragonborn Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer. It's like having a double shot of Dragon Espresso in your character build, potent, thrilling, and undoubtedly a rush. So, Dragonborn, what's their deal? Well, they get a plus 2 strength and plus 1 charisma boost right off the bat. Not only can they charm their way into or out of situations, but they also pack a punch if need be. Aging-wise, they're ahead of the curve, maturing by 15 and living up to about 80 years old. These humanoid dragons tower above most, standing over 6 feet tall, and have a solid build of around 250 pounds. 
Not to mention, they've got a brisk base walking speed of 30 feet. But the coolest part? They're straight up dragon descendants. Each dragonborn has an ancestor of a particular dragon type, and this lineage decides their breath weapon and the type of damage they can resist. The player's handbook has a good table to help pick your dragon lineage. When you use your breath weapon, each creature in the area of the exhalation must make a saving throw, the type of which is determined by your draconic ancestry. The DC for the saving throw equals 8 plus your constitution modifier plus your proficiency bonus. A creature takes 2d6 damage on a failed save, and half as much damage on a successful one. The damage increases to 3d6 at 6th level, 4d6 at 11th level, and 5d6 at 16th level. Additionally, Dragonborn is fluent in both common and draconic languages, making them key players in any dragon-related diplomacy or ancient lore investigation. Also, if you do not like the player's handbook Dragonborn, there are three different Dragonborn races in the Fizban's Treasury of Dragons. The Chromatic Dragonborn, Gem Dragonborn, and Metallic Dragonborn. All three of these Dragonborn variants have excellent race abilities that work well with the Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer. Switching gears to the Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer. At first level, you choose your Dragon Ancestor, which decides the damage type for your future abilities. There's more. As you level up, the Sorcerer's magic causes dragon-like physical traits to show up. You get an increase in hit points of 1 hit point per level and, if armor-free, a base armor class of 13 plus your dexterity modifier. At the 6th level, a feature called Elemental Affinity becomes accessible to you. This feature ties in with your Dragon Ancestor's affinity for a specific type of elemental damage, fire, cold, acid, lightning, or poison. With Elemental Affinity, you can add your Charisma modifier to any spell damage that corresponds with your Dragon Ancestor's damage type. This essentially means that if you have a high Charisma score, your spells of the corresponding type become even more potent. Moreover, the Elemental Affinity ability offers additional resilience in the face of adversity. By spending a single Sorcery Point, you can gain resistance to your Dragon Ancestor's damage type for an entire hour. This could be incredibly beneficial in certain battles, allowing you to withstand attacks that would otherwise be more damaging. Fast forward to the 14th level, and you acquire the ability to manifest physical dragon wings, a feature known as Draconic Wings. With a simple thought, you can sprout a pair of dragon-like wings from your back. Not only is this visually impressive, but it also grants you a flying speed equal to your current walking speed. This gives you an enormous tactical advantage in battle, allowing you to engage or disengage from combat as needed. It also provides an additional mode of transportation that can aid in exploring difficult terrains or avoiding ground-based hazards. Finally, upon reaching the 18th level, your Draconic Presence emerges. This advanced feature allows you to expend 5 sorcery points to create an aura that instills awe or fear in others. When activated, all creatures of your choice within a 60-foot radius must succeed on a Wisdom saving throw or become charmed, if awe is chosen, or frightened, if fear is chosen, until the end of your next turn. This powerful ability can sway the tide of battle, manipulating enemies and giving you a decisive edge in many situations. All in all, the Dragonborn Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer combo is your ticket to one hell of a wild ride in D&D. Not only does this pairing make your character a dragon-powered force to be reckoned with, but it also sets you up for a unique, engaging role-playing journey. You're not just any adventurer, you're a legend in the making, the embodiment of ancient dragons, wielding their might as you carve your own path. The race and the subclass work together to change you into an awesome mini-dragon. So, ready for some epic dragon action? Number 4 Arakakra and Kensei Monk Imagine the thrill you're an Arakakra Kensei monk, soaring high above the fray, eyes sharp as an eagle's, watching everything unfold from the vantage point only you can access. As an Arakakra, your aerial supremacy is unmatched, and your arrows become deadly messengers of justice, dispatched from the sanctuary of the sky. Laugh as the monsters can't touch you as you dive bomb them shooting multiple arrows, and then flying back up to safety. Now this strategy will work with any archer theme character including fighters and rangers, it's just the monk class really works well with the Arakakra armor restrictions. As an Arakakra, you possess certain traits right from the get-go. Your walking and flying speed is a swift 30 feet, a speed that applies in the air as well unless you're laden with medium or heavy armor. 
With talons as your natural weapons, your unarmed strikes can cause serious damage. At level 3, you also unlock your Racial Wind Caller trait, letting you cast Gust of Wind to control the battlefield. The way of the Kensei, you've trained relentlessly with your weapons. They become an extension of your body and a tool for expressing the precision and beauty of your martial arts. Such intense devotion makes you a peerless warrior on the battlefield and in the sky. At third level, you start your path of the Kensei, allowing you to master two types of weapons, one melee and one ranged and for an archer, there's no better choice than a longbow. Besides weapons, this path also provides instruction in calligraphy or painting, introducing the way of the brush. This allows you to gain proficiency with calligraphy or painting supplies. You also acquire Agile Parry. This skill enhances your defensive abilities when in combat. If you make an unarmed strike as part of your attack action and are holding a melee Kensei weapon, you can use it to defend yourself. By focusing your agility and awareness, you gain a plus 2 bonus to your armor class until the start of your next turn, as long as the weapon remains in your hand and you're not incapacitated. An important feature unlocked at this level is the Kensei Shot. By using a bonus action, your ranged attacks with a Kensei weapon, like your longbow, become more deadly. Any target hit by a ranged attack using a Kensei weapon takes an extra 1d4 damage of the weapon's type. This benefit lasts until the end of your current turn. At 6th level, your ki extends into your Kensei weapons, making you one with the blade. Your attacks with your Kensei weapons count as magical for overcoming resistance and immunity to non-magical attacks and damage. Also, when you hit a target with a Kensei weapon, you can use Death Strike to spend one key point to cause the weapon to deal extra damage equal to your martial arts die. At this level, you may choose another type of weapon, either melee or ranged, to be a Kensei weapon for you. At 11th level, you learn how to sharpen the blade by expending up to three key points as a bonus action. This grants one Kensei weapon a bonus to attack and damage rolls when you attack with it. The bonus equals the number of key points you spent and lasts for one minute or until you use this feature again. You also gain the option to choose another type of weapon, either melee or ranged, as a Kensei weapon. Finally, at 17th level, you gain the Extraordinary Accuracy of Unerring Accuracy. If you miss with an attack roll using a monk weapon on your turn, you can re-roll it, although you can use this feature only once on each of your turns. Also, at this level, you can choose another type of weapon, either melee or ranged, to be your final Kensei weapon. Remember, being an Arakakura Kensei monk isn't just about shooting arrows, it's about embodying the power of flight and the discipline of the monk. When you're in the air, arrows knocked and ready, most enemies on the ground can't reach you, making you a nigh-untouchable force on the battlefield. The sky is your domain, and from up there, you're not just a warrior, but also the master of your own destiny. So, are you ready to embrace the freedom of the skies and the precision of the bow? Get ready for an exciting adventure that takes you to new heights, both literally and metaphorically. Number 5 Tiefling and Fiend Warlock Let's talk about an awesome character combination that screams intrigue, power, and complexity, the Tiefling Fiend Warlock. Tieflings are creatures of unique heritage, marked by an infernal legacy that's often as captivating as it is unsettling. Their demonic lineage manifests in various traits, like their enhanced charisma and intelligence which fuels their aptitude for spellcasting. They're comparable to humans in age, size, and walking speed, but that's where the similarities end. Tieflings possess dark vision, a testament to their infernal ancestry that allows them to see in dim light as if it were bright, and total darkness as if it were merely dim light. Their infernal heritage isn't just for show tieflings are innately resistant to fire damage, a useful perk in any heated situation. They also inherit a unique infernal legacy that provides them with an innate spellcasting ability. This gift lets them cast Thaumaturgy, a cantrip that allows for small magical effects, and as they grow in power, spells like Hellish Rebuke and Darkness. Of course, they also speak, read, and write both common and infernal languages, a nod to their fiendish roots. If you're into diversity, remember that there are several tiefling variants, each with its own unique abilities. For instance, while the Asmodeus Tiefling sticks with the traditional Tiefling traits, a Glacia Tiefling swaps out the standard Infernal Legacy for the ability to cast this guy's self and invisibility handy tricks when subtlety is key. Now, imagine combining this fascinating race with the Warlock class, specifically the Fiend subclass. 
you've got a character that's not just made a deal with the devil, they're part devil themselves. With this pact, they gain an expanded spell list, adding fiery and devastating spells like Burning Hands, Fireball, and Flame Strike to their arsenal. As they progress, Fiend Warlocks unlock even more impressive abilities. At first level, they gain the Dark One's Blessing, which allows them to gain temporary hit points when they reduce a hostile creature to zero hit points. At sixth level, the Dark One's own lock lets them manipulate fate, adding a d10 roll to an ability check or saving throw. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest. At 10th level, Fiendish Resilience grants you resistance to a damage type of your choosing after finishing a short or long rest. The catch is that damage from magical or silver weapons bypasses this resistance. But, at 14th level, you're in for a wild ride with the power to hurl through hell. This ability really brings the heat, allowing you to send an enemy on a one-way trip through the nightmare landscapes of the lower planes. If the creature isn't a fiend itself, it takes a whopping 10d10 psychic damage when it returns from its brief but horrifying journey. Yes, you heard that right, 10d10. That's a potential of up to 100 psychic damage in a single go. If that doesn't embody your infernal power, nothing does. This blend of tiefling and fiend warlock results in a character filled with charisma, inherent magic, and the ability to call upon the powers of the lower planes talk about a recipe for an enthralling D&D experience. This combination basically changes you into a mini fiend. If you want to be a devil this is a race and subclass for you. So, are you ready to dive into the infernal realm with a tiefling fiend warlock? The choice, as always, is yours. And there you have it, legends! Five top tier race and subclass combos are sure to make your D&D experience a phenomenal one. But hey, the beauty of D&D lies in its diversity and infinite possibilities. So, if you've got a killer combo that you swear by, or you've had some legendary adventures with one of the combos we've covered, we want to hear all about it. Drop a comment below and join the conversation. Before you head off to embark on your epic quests, don't forget to smash that like button if you enjoyed the video. Consider subscribing and click that bell icon to get notifications, so you never miss out on any tips, tricks, and insights that could transform your game. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, game on and may your rolls always be natural 20s.